Now, sometimes skeptics will respond to this point by saying that in physics, subatomic particles, so-called virtual particles, come into being from nothing. Or certain theories of the origin of the universe are sometimes described in popular magazines as getting something from nothing, so that the universe is the exception to the proverb, there ain't no free lunch. This skeptical response represents, I believe, a deliberate abuse of science. The theories in question have to do with particles or the universes originating as a fluctuation of the energy contained in the vacuum. The vacuum in modern physics is not what laymen understand by vacuum, namely nothing. Rather, in physics, the vacuum is a sea of fluctuating energy governed by physical laws and having a physical structure. To tell laymen that on such theories something comes from nothing is a distortion of those theories. And there is, by the way, a lesson in this. You have to be very, very leery of popular articles and television shows on scientific theories. In order to communicate these highly technical theories to laymen, writers inevitably have to resort to metaphors and word pictures that can be grossly misleading and inaccurate. And the claim that physics shows that something can come from nothing is a case in point. Properly understood, nothing does not mean just empty space. Nothing is the absence of anything whatsoever, even space itself. As such, nothingness literally has no properties at all, since there isn't anything to have any properties. How silly, then, when popularizers say things like nothingness is unstable to quantum fluctuations or the universe tunneled into being out of nothing. When I first published my work on the Kalam cosmological argument in 1979, I figured that atheists would attack premise two of the argument, that the universe began to exist. But I didn't think that they'd go after premise one for that would make them look like people not sincerely seeking after truth, but just looking for an academic refutation of the argument. What a surprise, then, to hear atheists denying premise one in order to escape the argument. For example, Quentin Smith of the University of Western Michigan responded that the most rational position to hold is that the universe came from nothing by nothing and for nothing. Sort of a good conclusion to a Gettysburg Address of atheism, perhaps. <laughs> this is simply the faith of an atheist. In fact, I think this represents a greater leap of faith than belief in the existence of God. For it is, I repeat, literally worse than magic. If this is the alternative to belief in God, then unbelievers can never accuse believers of irrationality, for nothing, I think, could be more evidently irrational than this.